<clears throat> Hello out there today. Welcome to our podcast. This is Coach Eric Johnson, the brand. And it's Coach Aaron Thigpen, the source. EJ, got a subject for you today. When do you start the D1 journey? Mm-hmm. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this was we've had some talks lately about the transfer portal and how that's really affected college recruiting and, you know, the timeline for athletes and those sorts of things. And, you know, we did a podcast on that and, and uh, actually we may have done two now <laughs> on, on, right. the, um, on the transfer portal. Um, and junior college and a lot of different things in those aspects and where athletes kind of find themselves in that spectrum. Um, and and it was funny because I was listening to, uh, I saw a short reel or clip from um, Deion Sanders. Oh, okay. And he was just reiterating what we were talking about, how, you know, if you're a college coach, you know, why would you grab a kid who's 18 years old when you can grab a kid who's 22 <laughs> and <clears throat> and have someone who can immediately produce, has shown a collegiate record, you know, has a collegiate resume and can help you win now. And, and, and again, it's the same thing that we talked about. And so that right. got me thinking um, is... And, and what kind of stuck out was that age gap because right. he's right. Traditionally, most of the time, you were talking about an age gap of between 18-year-olds, you know, sometimes 17 if you graduate early, which right. was my case, and, and 20-year-olds. But you're no longer talking about 20-year-olds anymore. Now you're talking about 17, 18 in 22 so that's a four-year gap so that's like a freshman trying to come in and play varsity right if you kind of equate it to the high school Mm -hmm. level so you know i got to thinking you know now and that's a huge difference in those age ranges a ninth grader and a 12th grader an 18 year old and 22 in just their physicality probably you know their mental uh capacity maybe how they they approach the game emotional state all of those things right because now you're talking a young man to you know again essentially a young man but a lot more mature young man right exactly and and so you know usually we think of starting that that um hey i want to be a d1 athlete clock at you know, ninth grade, we say, okay, you know, ninth grade, I got to kind of start to get serious. Mm -hmm. But now where we've got a situation where we've got another two year gap, maybe we need to be starting and having that conversation with athletes earlier. So maybe your decision to be a D1 athlete has to not start at the ninth grade, but has to start at the seventh grade so that you can be prepared. And, you know, I, I know this kind of folds into the whole, you know, now we're really getting young and the youth sports and, you know, kind of pushing, you know, athletes. But the reality is, where do you make up that gap in development? You know, can you make up a four-year gap in four years of high school or do you need to start earlier? And what does that say for the multitude of kids that come through my door their junior year saying, oh, yeah, I think I want to play D1 ball now. <laughs> right. See? Yes. So, I... You know, we're always talking about preparation and management. And so that's just kind of where, you know, my mind went is, hey, um, how do is we something else I can't help? How do we? You know, how do we get athletes ready to be D1 athletes if we don't start them earlier? And now this is separate from getting to the whole, 
you know, getting on that whole recruitment train thing and I got to be seen and all the rest of that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how do we build the physical and technical tool sets to put them on track to be ready in D1. And I think we have to really seriously consider starting that clock, not at the ninth grade now, but at the seventh grade to increase the probability that they can be that athlete, that D1 athlete by the time they're a junior or senior. Yeah, man, that's a heavy subject. It's uh, definitely worthy of a conversation, Aaron. And you and I are seeing this, have been seeing this the past four years and slowly is become this. Aaron, I feel at this time, athletes need to start earlier and their athleticism, their tool set. And this can go back to a couple of things. One, there's no physical fitness in school anymore. And there used to be a, a period where there was physical activity for these athletes, presidential physical fitness. Right. You and I talk about this a lot. That's gone now. So where are their kids getting that natural set of uh, using their body weight and using their body? Kids don't know how to do that. Right. And they think by playing one sport year round or or just playing is 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 good enough just training that right. you and i know that in any sport you need to use your whole body and you need to understand how that body moves i am seeing you are seeing athletes coming through the door or playing in in our company that are not athletically prepared to play in college um because their body's not ready Either they come in at ninth grade or 10th grade through your doors or they come to our company and say, hey, get me ready. And it, it really takes, for me, I've always said this, it takes six years to train a hitter, just to train a hitter. Mm -hmm. Train, <laughs> I can say about like uh, the physicality that they need to have. Right, right. The mindset, you know, it takes six years to get all that together. And, and, and in that seventh year, they have a good feeling about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So if we go back to what you said about this 17-year-old kid versus this 22-year-old man, there's a difference. That 22-year-old man had from 17 to 22 to acquire a lot of knowledge in college. And this 22-year-old <laughs> player now is a sophomore. Yeah, <laughs> but, they're, but they're graduating, but they have, you know, yeah. they have two years of the portal, right? They have two years of the portal. So now it's a red short sophomore. Yeah. And, and you know, they're going to grad school. They got yeah. two years of grad school. They're going to graduate 24 out of grad school, but they had two years of eligibility, right? Right. So that's what we're dealing with. You're going to see less freshmen getting an opportunity because of what Deion Sanders said and what I've talked to probably 10 to 15 coaches that have told me that same thing. Yeah. I'm going to portal. Shoot. I've got a freshman who needs to develop. There's no more red shirting, Aaron. There's no more red shirting. Red shirting has gone. There's a 40 man roster and they can go and change that roster every year through what I call the portal free agency. Mm -hmm. So athletes, who are trying to come in and play collegiate sports as a freshman need to start earlier to gain that five or six years in order to compete with that 22 year old person. So that means that training starts at seventh grade. Simple yeah. as that. It starts there. It grows from there. And it's not like you come in and start lifting weights and you start doing this crazy. We're not saying that. What we're saying is that we're trying to prepare the body. So when that body is maturing, it's ready to take on the next level of training, whether it's, you know, sports performance, baseball, soccer, whatever, basketball. We need to prepare that body so it's ready to go. And we know that everybody's different. Everyone has a different timetable. If those athletes aren't being prepared early enough mm -hmm. and their timetable is really messed up. I've seen a lot of people walk through your doors recently 
And and that last year, their sophomore or junior year, and say, hey, get me ready. And I'm like going, no way. I mean, this people have no chance, you know? I mean, it takes years to acquire athleticism if you don't have it naturally. It, 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 it takes a while to get that body uh, trained the right way to move and understand how that works. Now, we're just talking about that. How about when you, 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 you take that body and you're trying to get it to move correctly from a sports standpoint, like baseball or hitting or fielding, and the body can't do that because it's not ready to do that yet. Right. You got to start these athletes earlier. I agree with you 100% on that. And I, if, if I, I'm telling all the listeners out there that really listen to us, just get your athletes prepared earlier that way. <laughs> Simple as that with that. So uh, this can go down many different avenues. And that's a that's a good starter. <laughs> hey, that's a good first cup of coffee today right there. Aaron. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you mentioned it takes about six years to develop an athlete because in track and field, we kind of adhere to that same sort of mentality where it takes four to six years. And it's not and it's not just an athlete who isn't athletic. It's right. just an athlete who does have tools. Right. And, and you're talking about not just taking four to six years to get him ready, him or her ready, but that's just to get him or her ready to perform at a certain level. Doesn't mean that they've arrived after those six years. Right. Right. So that's, that's just kind of setting the foundation going through a lot of different, you know, com competitive iterations and they build their IQ. Um, <clears throat> they start to build the, build the body better. You know, you have the cumulative effect of training now instilled in the body and the training becomes easier, but it becomes more specific, you know, and it becomes a lot more um, <clears throat> um, higher quality. And, and that does take time. And, I, you're right. I guess we need to start that, start that sooner versus later. I mean, not to again go overboard. And again, I'm not talking about the recruiting aspect. Right. I'm not we're not talking about taking your seventh grader out to USC, and saying, "Hey, you know, is this guy who you want?" <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking right. about laying a foundation for their athletic development you know skill set and and just physical development um i had another thought and it just went out of my head but you know those are that's that i think that's key now and yeah a seventh grader may not know if they want to play d1 ball you know so there's a <clears throat> it's it's kind of like where do you meet this athlete because again he's still you know they're young and at sixth or seventh grade you know, eighth grade, it's like asking them, what do you want to do for a living? You know, <laughs> exactly. When you grow up, eh, you know, some may still want to be astronauts and others might, you know, want to still be firemen and all the rest of this, but they're not really grounded in, you know, hey, the reality of what it takes and what they have to do and all that sort of thing. So it can be a challenge, <laughs> excuse me, uh, getting that seventh greater to to make that commitment um but you can still put those things in place even if it's kind of on a soft basis you know still right. start to get them to do some conditioning still start to get them to do you know maybe a little bit of you know extra skill-based training fielding hitting shooting you know whatever the case may be mm -hmm. um but you kind of want to get that ball rolling so that way you have some momentum once they decide, hey, yeah, okay, I'm on this, let's do this, you know, and you have it wasted, you know, a couple of years and he's not his sophomore year. And, you know, we're now trying to figure out <clears throat> how we do that. Now, with that said, maybe you also have a, a, a frank talk about what your expectations might be. Okay, you know, you're not really interested in doing all the work it takes to be a D1. So, but you may still want to play in college. So let's look at your other alternatives, you know, and, and so maybe you're going to be a D2 or a D, uh, you know, three athlete, or, or you might just play high school ball 
in sports and then that be the end of it. You know what, Aaron, it's funny you said that about the D1 athlete and I'll disagree with you on that and say, hey, you know, I've, I've talked to all these coaches D2, D3, they mm. think the same way, man. <laughs> I mean, I you know, talking to these these coaches, they think the same way. They're looking for these athletes to be prepared. It's like just because you play D2 or D3 baseball, it, it doesn't get easier. There are so many competitive athletes out there, student athletes that want to go out and compete and play at that next level. They're not settling for chopped liver anymore at the D2, D3 level. They're not. It's so funny to watch the coach's mentality totally change because of a circumstance that, and we can go on another tub, a subject, the circumstance of the NCAA and the portal and what it's happened in three years. That's just changed everybody's mindset, Aaron. And it's, and I was talking to, probably five D2 coaches. And they told me, man, we're just, you know, we're, we're gathering, we're going to portal and grabbing those D1 bounce backs who don't want to play, who are having trouble playing at this school and this other school. And they decide to come here and be a superstar. I have one athlete that went to a WCC school was a frontline guy and <clears throat> went to that school. And they said, well, maybe you're not ready. COVID happens. He transfers and he becomes a superstar at D2. May he wasn't ready at D1, but now he's an all league performer, excelling D2. That's really where he's at. And the coach is like, that's what we want. We want that D1 guy that's, you know, he could go there, but all of a sudden he gets there. He's not really ready. They right. think mm -hmm. we'll pick him and swap him up. And, <laughs> and, and they grab him. And then it's the same thing at D3 where there's no, you know, to be honest, there's no really, um, you, you know, D3 regulations, D2 are just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But even then, their mindset is, hey, listen, uh, I want to go get that guy. This guy went to a D1 school. They didn't like him. He transferred to my school. He said, forget D2. I'm just going to go to D3 and be a star. And they're getting these kinds of players. So if if you're thinking, people out there, that, hey, yeah, I'm just going to easily go to D2, D3, it doesn't work that way. It's <laughs> just as competitive, if not even more. So, you know, I kind of laugh at that a little bit. You know, you got regardless if it's D1, D2, D3, I feel you need to start your athlete a little bit earlier to understand that. And when you said about laying the foundation, start slow, that's excellent advice right there. Start slow, lay the foundation, find out where your athlete wants to be. You know, do they want to be a varsity athlete? Do they want to be a D1, D2, D3 athlete, NAIA athlete? I don't know, but find out and at least start something. That's the whole thing. Start something. Don't wait till the last minute. Oh, well, it sounds like there's no safe, no safe place to land. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> uh, it's it's hot everywhere. And hey, you know, that's just the nature of sports now. But, um, you know, I think, you know, again, looking at the landscape, <clears throat> uh, we got to be more, a lot more realistic. Right. Our kids. And right. And having them make those decisions and understanding the ramifications of those decisions. Now, you you know, you can never say never, you know, the kid can change their mind and turn things around. But I just find it's a lot harder. Um, and this also kind of um, relates to one of the other things that you had mentioned, and I, it almost had skipped my mind. I'm glad we kept talking right. is um, you talked about, you know, the lack of of physicality athleticism and a lot of these athletes and uh, because there's no pe and all these uh, and they don't participate in these sorts of activities anymore <clears throat> and you're right and a lot one reason one of the biggest reasons athletes come to me and i hear it all the time between the ages of 11 and 15 is their lack of athleticism they can't mm -hmm. run, they can't jump, their balance, their coordination is off, you know, and a lot of that, <clears throat> you know, I used to, you know, attribute to growth spurts and, and there, a good, you know, there's a proportion of athletes that, that, that happens to, but 
I'm really now taking a, a, a harder look at it because I'm, I'm starting to get some younger athletes because I'm understanding the importance of these kids doing these things, not hardcore, but because they're not doing them anywhere else. Right. And I'm seeing the effect of them not doing those things when they get to be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And, and you know, that's probably the, the biggest group of athletes that I have coming in. And, it, and again, it's not just because they are having a going through a growth spurt or that sort of thing, but it's because they never acquired the skill to begin with. Right. Because they never went out and played. They never did anything in the fourth grade, the fifth grade, the sixth grade. They didn't have PE. You know, they didn't really have a lot of recreational, uh, diverse recreational activities. So that results in them, again, as we talked about before, always having this narrow skill set, even though I've been playing soccer since I was four years old. Well, that's a very narrow skill set. Doesn't make you an athlete. Okay, because I think the two things are different. I think there there are, you know, there's your sport and then there's athletes, you know, right. and the two have to come together. But a lot of kids nowadays are just sports specific participants. I wouldn't even call them athletes. Okay, I love that. Yeah. So where's the well and overall roundedness and 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 broad spectrum or repertoire of movement that they need to be a better athlete. And that's coming crashing down on them at those ages of 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And so if you're not doing some basic things at the beginning of their, just their athletic or sport development to go along with the sport specific stuff, you're still going to find yourself behind. And I think parents have the misconception, like I said, well, my kid's been playing baseball since he was, you know, five years old, but that's not being an athlete. Mm. It's funny, man. I do that, I think. Oh. You know, Aaron, it, it, what you said brought back a lot of memories. Um, and I remember in high school, and, you know, when you're in, you're in grade school, you play a lot of sports, man. When you're like in elementary and oh, yeah. you play football with your buddies in the street, because that's what we did. Oh. And then you go to the field and play and, and play tackle football without the pads. And you get dirty, you get in the ground, you hit the ground, you see how it feels, how your body feels, all that stuff. Um, that's part of your athleticism. And I remember um, I played a lot of sports. And I remember, remember my freshman year, I had a friend named Jamie Fowler. And we, and he was a basketball player too. We both played basketball, played baseball. We would go out and play tennis every Friday. We'd go play tennis. And we played tennis for a couple of reasons. One, reaction, footwork, um, just overall quickness and getting the balls and stuff. It made us such great basketball players when we competed in basketball. And we did it, you know, knowing that, hey, let's go do something different. Let's not, you know, we, we shoot hoops and we go do the other stuff too, but let's try something different and see if we can coordinate and, 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 and be better at this. And we used to do that every Friday in the fall, we would, uh, you know, we, we meet somewhere at a tennis, public tennis court. And he has, I had my little wood racket. He had his wood racket and we had That's a going ball. Way back. I remember that now. Yeah. And we, we would go out and play. We played two or three sets, you know, a couple hours. It was part of just, what'd you do today? Well, we, we played tennis, worked out. That was a workout, but it helped us so much in different, you know, different skill sets to, to get to the tennis ball and to swing at it and hit it solid and right. hand -eye coordination. I don't see any kids doing that anymore, man. I don't see kids, you know, acquiring those skills because they're only so directed at this one thing of, of training and not using a multitude of sports to help them uh, achieve athleticism. Here's an old time memory. Uh, you could drive down my street <clears throat> back in the 70s, probably 72, you know, mm -hmm. on 
and you would drive down the street and on every, you always knew where there was a kid living at a house because you saw all the pot marks from the tennis balls on the garage door. Remember <laughs> that? Because you were yeah. throwing the ball against the garage door and fielding. You either, like you said, hitting it with a tennis racket, you know, doing something. Okay. But the garage door was our backstop. And I remember our garage door always used to be pot-marked with the smudges of <laughs> any ball. <laughs> tennis balls, nerf balls, whatever we had, you know, scum, right. wiffle balls. Oh man, that's funny. Anyway, that just brought an old time here. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we've got to change how we're doing things again. I think, right? right. Um, that's really what it comes down to. I, there, I think there needs to be a shift in thinking, and now a shift in tactics if we want to. You know, there's no guarantees. I'll hear you say it all the time. Hear me say it all the time, but raise the probability for mm. our athletes to have success, you know, at the higher levels. Well said, Aaron. Well said today, you know, you know, again, way to bring it back to, you know, when to start that, that, that journey for an athlete to, to excel at the next level. So well, sports fans out there, hope you enjoyed our topic today. And, uh, Please hit the like button on YouTube with us. We, we want to hear your feedback. But this is Coach Eric Johnson, the brand. And I'll always remind you to hit the dislike button. <laughs> this is Coach Aaron, the source. We'll take it all. We'll see you guys.